The first step is to power up the controller. Once it's powered up, you'll see the start screen. In the start screen menu, you have three choices, program move, manual move, and settings. We'll start by looking at settings. We'll use the down arrow to navigate to settings and then press enter. In here, you'll see that you can swap the orientation for the left-right control or the up-down controls. There's also the option for firmware update. When there's a new firmware update, you'll first power up the second shooter controller, then connect your micro USB to USB from the controller to your laptop. Then press enter on firmware update. You'll see the second shooter pop up on your screen. Then you'll copy the second shooter firmware file from your desktop into the folder that says second shooter. We will press menu to get out of this and then we'll look at manual move. We've added manual move to the startup screen. This mode is similar to our basic controller. This will give you manual adjustment of pan, tilt, and slide. The default speed is 50%, which is a good starting point. If you'd like to adjust that speed up or down, you can do so using the up or down arrow. Once you've adjusted that to the speed you like, press enter. Now that you are in the running section, you can use your left and right arrows to run your slider, up and down arrows to control your tilt, and shift and left and right to control your pan. This mode is great for run and gun situations where you want to set up fast and just do a quick slide, pan, or tilt without programming a move. We will press menu twice to get back to the start screen. Press the up arrow to go to program move and hit enter. As you can see, it's prompting you to set the first keyframe. Use the left or right arrow to position the slider where you want it to begin. If you have pan and tilt options enabled as well, you'll use the up or down arrow to position the tilt and shift and left or right to position the pan where you'd like it for the start of the move. Once you're happy with that, press enter. Now it will prompt you to set the second keyframe position. Use the left or right arrow to position the slider where you want it to end up at. Then use shift and left or right to position the pan where you'd like it for the end of the move. And then use the up or down arrow to position the tilt. Once you have the second position set, press enter. You can now play back the move in any fashion you'd like, whether it's in looping scrub mode, time lapse, or stop motion. First, let's look at looping scrub. You can see here we have a time adjustment. What that time of 30 seconds represents is how long it will take to get from that first keyframe to the second keyframe. 30 seconds is a good default time, but if you want to adjust it, just press enter and you can adjust the runtime. Once you get that set the way you like it, press enter and now you can adjust your ramp. The percentage value indicates the change in speed of the movement over the entire move. The time value to the right shows how fast or slow the system gets up to top speed and how fast or slow the system comes to a stop. In this case, the time is seven seconds. What that is telling you is that on a 30 second move, it's going to take seven seconds to get up to full speed. It'll hold that speed and ramp down over the last seven seconds. The percentage value of 50% means it will ramp up over the first 25% of the move, maintain full speed for the next 50%, and then ramp down over the last 25%. If you selected a 100% ramp, it would ramp up for the first 50% of the move and then deaccelerate over the last 50% of the move. Once you've adjusted that the way you like, press the down arrow and hit enter to run. It will go back to the first keyframe position and then it will just play that move back and forth Press enter to get into scrubbing mode. In scrubbing mode, when you press the left or right arrow, it will fast forward through the move and scrub from the first keyframe to the second keyframe. If you press shift in the left or right arrow, it will scrub the move manually at the actual runtime of the program move. If I let go of the shift button, it will fast forward through the move. So if you want to see what the shot will look like in a hurry, you can use that option. Press menu once 
to back up to the adjustment section of the menu and press it again to get back to the shooting style selection menu. We already have our two keyframe move program. Now we're going to set up a time lapse. We'll go to time lapse and click enter. You have the option of doing shoot move shoot or continuous. We'll leave it at shoot move shoot. The next thing it asks you is exposure time. You want that set equal to or greater than what you have set in camera if you are in manual mode or one of the modes other than bulb mode. If you are going to be in bulb mode, our built-in intervalometer will control the duration of the exposure in the camera for you. The second thing you want to adjust is your delay. We'll run this up to three and a half seconds. Then we choose how many photos we want. Let's say we want a thousand photos. We go up to photos, hit enter, and then use the down or the up arrow key to select the number we want. And you'll notice as you hold down the arrow key, it'll start to jump in bigger increments. The runtime lets us know that it's going to be a 1 hour and 15 minute time lapse. If you want the time lapse to be longer, you can increase the number of photos until it reaches your desired time. We'll just leave it at 1300 for demonstration purposes. Then we'll press enter, then enter on next. On ramp, it gives you two options again. The first is a percentage, which defaults to 50%, meaning it will ramp up over the first 25% of the move, maintain full speed for the next 50%, and then ramp down over the last 25%. We also give you the frame readout, which in this case means over the first 325 photos, it's going to ramp up, then over the last 325 photos, it'll ramp down. So we'll go ahead and hit enter to start. You'll notice after it reaches the first keyframe position, the backlight on the display turns off. We do that so it doesn't give any light pollution if you're doing long exposure. You can hit shift to toggle the backlight on or off. Now we'll take a look at stop motion. We still have our same two keyframe move program. We'll select stop motion and press enter. The first option is for how many photos you want to take. We'll press enter and then use the up arrow to set that at 100 photos. Once we get to 100, we'll press enter. You have your ramp, which again is displayed in percentage and frames. So in this case, it'll ramp up speed over the first 25 frames and then ramp down over the last 25 frames. You now have the option to select manual advance, which is where you'll take your photo and then manually advance it to the next position or you can press enter to change it to auto advance. Auto advance is where after you take a photo, it automatically advances to the next position and then it will wait to move until you take the next photo. Press the down arrow and press enter for next. Now you're in the mode ready to play back your move. So we'll press enter on snap. Takes the photo, advances to the next position. Press enter again, it takes the photo and moves to the next position. To go back to the shooting style selection menu, just press enter two times. We've been working with the same two keyframe move in this video. To program a new move, just press menu, which will take you back to the start screen. Select program move and press enter. It's now giving you the option to skip, which would keep your program move. Or we can go to new move and press enter to program a new move. And again, it's going to ask you to mark your first keyframe and second keyframe. Anytime you're in a setup mode or a manual running mode, you can press any of the two same axis arrow keys and hold it for three seconds to swap the orientation. So here I've swapped my left and right. So if I want to swap my tilt axis controls, I press and hold up and down for three seconds and it swaps the controls. Also, at any time, you can press shift and enter to toggle the built-in flashlight on or off.